my view is I was kind of surprised to hear that Steven recorded the phone call with Jeremy because um, I don't I don't know why you would. Oh, you know um, I mean? um, by the way, it, it should be mentioned that conversation. So they stopped negotiating completely, which Jeremy made clear in his video. This was over. He doesn't even know what this is coming from because this this conversation stopped when Steven Crowder then came back with a counter term sheet offer of one, a glorious one hundred and forty million dollars over X amount of years. And they said, we just can't do this. Right. Then he sat and he stewed and he said nothing until one week ago. He reaches out to Jeremy and he asks him to talk on the phone. And that was one week ago. That is the conversation that you are, guys are all hearing that he is playing right now. So he plotted this. This is a plot line. He planned to then record him to go back and to make this video. If, if, this, if he had recorded this way back during negotiations, maybe you could say there was no plot. Why did he reach out to Jeremy exactly one week ago when they hadn't discussed anything pertaining to the contract and they said no one walked away last year around October, November? And then suddenly in January, he reaches out one week ago and says, hey, can we get on the phone? And he decides, maybe I should record this. Well, no, it's because he realized he had nowhere left to go. And his next plot in this storyline, in this terrible childhood acting that he's doing right now, was, okay, I have to do my own thing now. And so I need to drum up some drama to get everybody that I know to believe that I am a martyr for our beliefs. And they should dump their subscriptions to everybody else that's part of BigCon and join the mug club. How can people not see? I mean, the writing is just so on the wall. The fact that he recorded Jeremy says that he did plan. Of you know, he if he, you, look, I'm not I'm not here to impugn his honor. I, I think you're absolutely entitled to your view, having you know working with the Daily Wire and everything you've seen. But uh, it like it does suggest that he knew he was calling Jeremy for this reason. I think I think Crowder is. Um, I, I don't I don't know if I, I I think it might be too far for me to believe that Crowder is trying to do this to pull subscribers from Daily Wire or make more money for himself because the dude already makes a lot of money. But not he he does not. He, he thinks that he is worthy of $140 million a year. Do you believe that Steven Crowder right now is making $140 million a I year? I bet he could. You bet he could. I, I absolutely do You bet he, he could, could yeah. but how's he got to do that? How's he got to start that? He just had a couple of kids. How's he got to start that? You launch a war in the conservative movement and you move people away from a business that you want to model. You know, I don't know who's modeling who. I don't know who started this first. But you basically say, I'm not them. Come with me. And that's exactly what he's doing. Call a spade a spade. Call a spade a spade. OK, this was a plot line. And that annoys me because he, he dragged me into this plot line. OK, he dragged us all into this plot line. He's basically saying, oh, he, at one point in his video, this is what really set me off. He's like, and so you might be noticing that a lot of these people, um, their viewpoints are sanitized. And this is why. This contract. This is why. Essentially saying that Candace is controlled, Matt Walsh is controlled, Michael Knowles is controlled, Brett Cooper is controlled, and now we know why, guys, because I have this contract, which I've conveniently excerpted portions that could allow you to discern for yourself, but it's actually not that unreasonable as a starter conversation, which is what a term sheet is, right? And instead, I'm just going to smear all these people that are associated with the other wire, and that's why I'm pissed off. That's why I'm pissed off, because I then was fielding comments calling me a fraud because they thought that I agreed to these terms and that my voice was being controlled. You know, I, I told Steven, I said, um, I think ideologically, I understand his right with the contracts and I, and I agree with the contracts. We don't, we don't do contracts the way the Daily Wire does. There was no contract. I just want to say that one more well, time. Uh, right. So uh, uh, contract, different term, um, terms. I don't, I don't do terms the way the Daily Wire does. I also am, you know, the way, I'll, 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 it's, it's like the Joe Rogan story I often tell that he booted me from his show twice and I didn't get mad at him. I was like, well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of pissed off that he, he booted me twice, like happened twice, and I flew out to LA, but he doesn't owe me any favors. I'm not going to rag on Joe Rogan because he didn't do me a favor. If I was on his show, it'd be really great for me. It didn't work out. I'm going to carry on with my life and my business. I've negotiated with the Daily Wire. We couldn't, we couldn't figure out something that worked. Mm -hmm. We're very different in that sense. And I said, well, you know, it was, it was nice hanging out, and let's, let's work on stuff in the future, and we'll make awesome stuff. I told Steven, I said, I think that the Daily Wire is a massive net positive, especially with like, what is a woman? I mean, that was a massive cultural force that got even mainstream like moderate lefty types to be like oh yeah i've seen that mm -hmm. and start this conversation uh then you did the blm documentary of course that had uh, I, I don't i don't think it was nearly as big as what is a woman but it certainly had a cultural response these things are, are tremendous and so my attitude is like look i don't i don't i don't like the the, the contracts of like they're very they're very business like the very entertainment industry I understand that Daily Wire, that Daily Wire does it. 